Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome I'm you really to our regular good. scheduled council meeting for November 1st, uh, 6 30 right. p.m. here at the Shelter House. Um, uh, good evening, council, Mr. Bridge, clerk, and audience. Uh, Ms. Berner, thank you for coming back. And uh, if you call roll, please. Yep, Mayor Lowry. Here. Councilman Grimm. I'm here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Nowakowski. Here. Councilman Cobb. Here. Councilman Roadwald is absent. And Vice Mayor Cook. Here. Six members present. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bridge uh, is pretty thrilled to be doing your job at the last meeting. You did an excellent I'm job. I'm glad too. you're back. Oh, man. Let's go. That's well, a lot. I was going to say the next meeting we're going to be going to. <laughs> <laughs> I think I should be good. All the banquets are over with. Everything is. All right. Yeah, tonight, tonight's tonight's invocation be will be by Councilman Cox. I know. Dear Heavenly Father, give us the guidance to do what's right for our citizens and our community. Watch over our first responders, our fire and EMS, our deputy sheriffs, and watch over our military. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. Okay, so we'll need action on the, the uh, work session for the 10 18 21 so work session. Second. Any uh, discussion on that meeting, Council? Mm -hmm. A minute, I should say. All right, Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 6 0. Right, and then for the October 18th, 2021 uh, regular session minutes. So moved. Second. Eggleston Minikowski, any discussion? Yes. Sir. Sure. Number five, action on minutes. Work session 10 to 10 421. Eggleston, second Grimm. Yes, seven. Eggleston, Nowakowski, Cobb, Rodewald, Cook, Grimm, Eggleston. Obviously, Peggy voted twice. Oops. Okay, hold on. Regular session 10 Regular 18. Regular session correct? 5. All right. And it is. Peggy is in there twice as voted. Okay. Nay, zero, abstain, one, Lowry, absent, accepted, seven, zero. It should be. Six zero one. Lowry absent. I probably cut and pasted. It's correct on here. If you'd like to see it, I probably gave the wrong. Okay. Would you like to check it real I quick? I you were doing it like late at night or something. <laughs> I bet you I cut and pasted and I forgot to delete, but and then I submitted. If you want to check it real fast. No, you were also not at the uh, work session. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Why am I getting drugged into this? You're not. Oh. I would gladly come along. <laughs> and it said I was at the work session? No, it said I wasn't. You sit here. I bet you I just cut and pasted the attendance and got it all messed up. Oh, yeah, okay. You were at the work session. Yeah. The work so session. let me tell you what I have real fast so we can have, make sure it's correct. Okay. Okay. Is that, okay. Yeah, okay. All right. For the work session. No, for the regular session. Regular session. Mm -hmm. All right. It says October 4th, first was Cook, second Eggleston. Yes, seven. Nowakowski, Cobb, Roadwald, Cook, Grimm, Eggleston. Nay, zero. Okay. For which meeting? October what? Um, ten eighteen. Oh, yeah, because I thought you just said October four. Well, we were voting on those minutes. Oh, okay. I see what you. Oh, gotcha. Is that correct, Mr. Grimm? Okay. No, they, it's, I must they have didn't, submitted they didn't, the. They didn't match up. Gotcha. I don't remember who all was here. Who wasn't? Yeah, I was here. Everybody was there for that. So I probably, it was just an error. And okay. I submitted the wrong one. But on here, the actual record one is. Okay. Would you like your copy? I take her word for it. All right. She's not lied to me before. Okay. All right. All right. So call to the vote when you're ready, please. Uh, no, I cut and pasted and had an extra in on there. Thank you. 
Okay, so we're good to call. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. Those minutes are accepted 6-0. All right, thank you very much. Moving on, communications none tonight. City, city manager report is attached. Mr. Bridge, good evening, sir, and I will hand it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, members of the public. Uh, it's the first of the month, so it's not as heavy as usual, so I'll kind of get through it real quick. Uh, under informational items, fixed asset valuation and tracking. That is um, the capital assets that we have, and for our 2019 audit, we got dinged for that. Um, we will find another, have another finding on that for the 2020. However, it'll be cleaned up for the 2020 audit this year because it should be done by the end of November. Uh, the total cost was around 10800 on that. Um, I was going to put that out, but we actually found a company that gave us a really good price on it, so I just did it so we can have it done before the end of the year. So that should be um, hopefully done by the end of November. We just got the invoice for it today, so we're very excited about that. Um, our 2020 audit it says it's inter internal review, uh, state submission and approval next. So um, that has been submitted to the state for review. I signed the paperwork on it actually today. It is looking significantly better than what it did last year. Uh, if you remember last year, we had the balancing issues from the um, former employees, so we had to get that all cleaned up. So last year's audit was a uh, mess. So when I say last year, we say 2019. However, this year it's much, much, much better. Um, we are actually two findings uh, away from having a clean audit. So we're fixing up the fixed asset value, so that'd be gone for 2022. I mean, I'm sorry, for 2021. And then the other finding we had for our 2020 audit had to do with some postings we did. Um, and it really wasn't our, our issue because how the uh, county give us, gives us our settlement sheet, and we'll go into this more detail next one, just to give you guys a heads up. How they did the settlement sheet was off, um, and that's how we recorded the books. Um, so we're trying to correct that with them moving forward so they're not sending us uh, wrong numbers. But the audit is looking very, very good. Um, by weekly meeting, this is something that came up um, from the vice mayor. So I thought about it, um, so we're gonna bring it to council, but basically what we're requesting is a bi-weekly meeting to where myself, the vice mayor, and the mayor will meet, um, discuss city business, it's gonna be every two weeks. What I would like to see added is an alternating city council member, and then um, what I'll probably do is, for pertinent days that we have discussion, I'll bring a department head to meet us as well. So at least we'll always meet with the mayor and vice mayor, but we'll rotate the other seats around. So one week, uh, one meeting, Mr. Cobb could go, the next two weeks, Mr. Grimm can go, so we at least have three members of council there. Um, so given that I, council as a whole has to direct me, I am seeking a motion for approval on that so we can get that going, because I think it would be beneficial to help with communication. How do we approve the meetings as Mr. Briggs described? Second. Motion by Mr. Grimm, second by Ms. Adelson. <coughs> um, Quick question before she calls for the vote. Have you guys ironed out like a time? I mean, I'm sure it'll vary depending on workload and uh, how your schedule, everybody's schedules are. So. We'll let you know well in advance because you're the one who would probably work. Okay. And then Mr. Cook well, will coordinate it. Like we had talked about doing a ride around the town, that could be a situation that we could do that one week. We could meet for lunch, we could meet for coffee. Um, whenever the three parties could get together. But I think if you have read the charter reviews paperwork that they submitted also, I think this is calling for, and I won't say better communications, but I think this is a step that we can do that would help us. To improve communication. Any other comments on this? When you're ready, please. Okay. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? I see enough of you already, but I'll, I'll, I'll oh. vote yes, I guess. You know? Yeah, we'll have food this time, though. <laughs> Councilman Grimm? Yes. And Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. <laughs> that motion passes 6-0. Awesome. Thank you. I'm excited about that. All right, so attached is a Speedway liquor permit. So basically what this is saying is, is it looks like they're renewing their liquor permits and need council to look at it because it is addressed to the clerk of council, which means that it is a council function. Um, I cannot sign the paperwork on my own without discussing it with you guys. But basically, if you okay with them uh, having their liquor permit, we do nothing. If you wanna have a hearing, 
you direct me to check this box and sign off that you want to have it here. I had a quick question. I read through it, and I was, I mean, I don't print much, so I thought they already had a beer cake there. Well, they do, but you have to redo the permit every summer. So oh, is that, okay. It's a renewal. So they're, okay. Yep. That's what I thought. I said, they're selling alcohol, but then mm -hmm. someone told me, well, no, they don't sell alcohol there. So. No, they've always had it, but you have to renew it every so often. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yep. i got another question after this passes on this related subject. If you okay. don't sure. Any other questions or comments on this particular issue? So what I would recommend if council doesn't have an issue, does someone pass a motion to not have a hearing? So moved. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Eggleston. To not have no. a hearing. Right. Who is that person? Um, Cook. Cook Eggleston. Eggleston. Steve, we have this in there, correct? Uh huh. Renewal. And Randy, I'll actually, I'll save my comment for other business since it's not on that exact topic. Sure. Okay. Um, Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. No, I'm not. I'm oh. just, I, I just caught more pieces of it. We're talking about an alcohol, right? Yeah, so Speedway, they sell the beer down there. You every time you have to renew it every, every now and then. Okay. So yeah. that's what you're just renewing it. Okay. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. And Councilman Eggleston. Yes. That motion passes 6 0. Thank you. Thank you. And you said you're going to hold off, Mr. Mayor? Yes, okay. if that's okay with you. Yeah, absolutely. And just to give a thank you to Councilwoman Eggleston for attending the TCC's active transportation plan with me. Uh, that was a good time, good information. So thank you for that, for taking time out of your busy day to show, show uh, support. And we got some discussion points that a uh, few, most of these are just stuff that we just overlooked in our budget discussions. Um, so one is the additional speakers for downtown. I know that had come up. I think it just slips to people's mind to really put it back into the budget. So um, we plan on doing the veterans banners, which I'll update you guys on that because I have some more information on. I'll shoot you guys an email Tuesday or Wednesday on that. We plan on putting those north of 101 where the tree goes or Washington is and have it keep on going up. So we don't want a lot of stuff down there. So as the speakers, if we have additional more, if we put them down by CBS and then Abe's Hidden Treasures down in that little V area, would that be suffice the council? Okay, so there's around $2,000, I think a set, 25. I don't know how much we're going to need. So just for a placeholder of a number, I'd probably want at least 11 or 12. If we won't use it all, just filters back in there. But uh, I don't, we need to just account for stuff. I don't have to come back if it's not enough. Right. Is that what I'm saying? Yeah. So does any council have a discussion for that? Are we okay with the additional speakers? 11 or 12,000. Okay. Yep. As opposed to 11 or 12 speakers. Oh yeah, yeah, we don't need that many. Yeah. <laughs> What we'll do is we'll call the company because they did a good job. With, they'll look at an aerial shot and tell us where to place them. So it could be two sets. It could be three sets just based off how the music's going to bounce off the buildings. Have you guys got a chance to hear it yet? That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah but that didn't, that didn't, uh, I, that, the only time I got to it was right before the festival, uh, a couple of days before how he went into the city building and turned mm -hmm. on, you know, whatever streaming service you guys have. And it was, I mean, it just sounded so great. It was mm -hmm. so crisp and clear. So when are you guys going to turn some? Uh, soon. We're having a staff meeting tomorrow, so I'm sure we'll All right. It's officially Christmas music season, so. All right. Can you be sing along? Yeah. Amen. All right. So if we're good with that, we'll just do a motion to approve an additional 12000 into the budget. All right. Is that Ms. Nowakowski? Off Ms. Agerson? Second by Ms. Nowakowski. First was Eggleston. Eggleston, no Okay. Thousand. All right. Councilman Cobb? Yeah. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. That motion is approved 6 0. All right. Um, you have another item on there, so electric re reader board. I actually scratched that out uh, talking to some folks today. The prices of those have skyrocketed, so I'm actually going to suggest that um, we wait maybe a few months. If we need to put that into the budget, we can. 
Um, just a little backstory. I wanted to get an electric reader board for the side of 101 South Main Street when you're heading south, where the attorney sign used to be. Just put an electric reader board out there. Um, we got them quoted, and for COVID CARES money, they're around 19.5, and the price I got back was around 30. So it's shooting up a little bit. So we're going to wait a little bit. My recommendation: we're going to have to do a supplemental probably about six months into the budget period. So we'll see if the prices of goods have went down. I just can't stomach that price right now, even if it waits to 2023. You know, but long term, I think it'd be great to have something there that we can put messages on. So I'll skip that for this year. Council's okay with that. And then the last thing on here for regarding the budget is a budget line item uh, that we can add some money into for uh, business meals for the city manager. Uh, right now, it's about 50-50 I pay for out of my own pocket. I, the city just doesn't have the line item funds for that. So if I take someone out to lunch and we talk about business, sometimes I pay for it out of my own pocket. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to have that increased a little bit so that's not such a burden on that. And then, two, if we go out to lunch for the meetings we're going to have, we can, we can do that as well. Um, so I'm thinking right around maybe 2500 or 3000 for the year on that. Doesn't mean we'll use it all, but at least we'll put a cushion in. Yeah. Any discussion on that, you think? Are we okay with that? Okay. Is that about what you're spending? Um, I haven't looked at my personal side of things, but it, it does add up. It does add up. So right now, it, we don't have a line item at all, so it's just taken out of under miscellaneous items or you know, other things we can pull it out of. We don't have one specific that says, like, pull out business launches. Okay. Yep. So we'll just do 25 or 3. What do you guys think? I'll go with your best judgment. You're, you see it every day. Yes, we'll just, we'll just do three. That way we won't, we won't use it if we don't have to use it. So we'll take a motion for that. Second. Notowski, Eggleston. Okay. And this one, I didn't catch the amount. Like what? 3000 3, Okay. Okay. Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yeah. Vice well, Mayor Cook? Yes. <laughs> Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. <coughs> Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That and the silver clip, that is only, I, like if I go out to lunch by myself, that won't be used. It's just if you take a developer or, you know, one of you guys out, we're talking about city business strictly, that's where it'll be used. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and the last thing on there, I gave a handout. Uh, so we got our insurance rate back late, late Friday. Um, so we haven't went to the union yet. I'm going to do that within tomorrow. However, what I wanted to approach council with about is right now we have a waiver on our health insurance, and basically it says if you are eligible for our health insurance, if you don't take it, then we're going to pay you $750. Well, we're behind a curve on that. I would like to come to council to get that increased, um, and I say it because of this. So let's just say, for example, we have an employee who came to me and says, I'm coming off the family plan, and I'm going to save you guys thousands upon thousands of dollars a year, and I feel as though my $750 payout is very low, and I agreed with them. It, it highly is very, very low. So what I did is I put some numbers together. So let's say, for example, that family plan. If that um, employee were to stay on, uh, it would cost us $41,443 for the year. If they opt out and they go on their other insurance so part of that waiver is that in order to for you to waive ours you have to be on someone else's your other spouse's so we'll forget the paperwork that says i'm on my spouse's um we would like to see that increase to at least five or six thousand for that for that burden of them coming off of our um, insurance plan so if they come off we pay them five six thousand we save the 41. and that's about lined with a lot of other people a lot of people are starting to increase that. Um, the vast majority of our people are on single plans, so that goes a long way. Um, but we do have, you know, people who employ spouse that if we offer the same benefit, they <coughs> probably get enough to go back on their spouse's insurance because we've got such good insurance that a spouse will come to ours just because ours is better. So you see these these creative ways to reduce your monthly cost on insurance. So. Um, again, I'm a very big advocate of this. If we can get that waiver paid out, we can save a lot of money on the year. So what does the council thought on that? Correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but if a husband and wife have medical insurance and one of them needs to file a claim on it, 
They can only file with one company. Right, but a lot of times the spouse and the husband won't have the insurance. Like it'll be the if the guy works for us, the spouse will be covered on us, or they'll take the spousal insurance, and then the and the husband won't have any through us. Very rarely do we have where they both have insurance. But yeah, I think in the terms, if you do have two health insurance, you can only run it through one. We just said they could only waive it if they had another policy. Well, yeah. They wouldn't be able to collect on two, two policies. Well, that's not the point of collecting on two policies. The point, the point of it is, if you're going to waive our health insurance, you need to make sure that you have some sort of health insurance in place. We don't want you to be uninsured. Right. So as long as your spouse has insurance, you're good to go. Okay, let me try it again. So, so like, if, unless I'm misunderstanding. Okay, let's say Mike has insurance to his work. April is employed outside the home, out of the new pool and has insurance on a family plan. Mike gets sick. He cannot collect on his insurance and April. No, but a lot of people don't have two, two insurance plans. That's what he's saying. He, what he's saying is, is- Why would Mike have insurance if there's a family? Like, let's say for right now, my insurance is through the base and April's on my insurance. But let's say something changes there <coughs> and I jump on to April's insurance, insurance or right. And now I drop mine from the city and it saves the city. Well, it would be silly for you to have, for both of you to have the same thing. Right. Because you can only collect on one of them. Yeah, so we're enticing people to go on the other insurance plan, so we're not paying the monthly. We're, it's an incentive for people to go get insurance somewhere else as long as we're covered. I see what you're saying now. But they already have insurance somewhere else. No. <laughs> Do they spell? No. Not always. Then where do they have the insurance? This is if only for people who are waiving city. our insurance. Yeah, and if they're waiving it, they have to have another policy. Yes, or they can choose to stay on ours and cost us the $41,000 a year. So we're incentivizing people to get off our policy to go somewhere else. That's basically what we're doing. If the spouse has That's a single and she adds her husband, then her rates have to go up and you've got to compensate somehow we All we're doing, <laughs> we're incentivizing people to take insurance elsewhere when it boils down to it. If someone, if we can have an opportunity for someone to go on someone else's plan and still be covered and it saves us the $41,443 a year, okay, they, they still have insurance coverage. It's not through us, but they're still covered in the event that they get hurt. And yet they're saving us all that money in a year. So a lot of people are starting to give these in insurance incentives to get them off of their policy. Mr. Cobb, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought when they first started this program, if your spouse, if you were working here and you have insurance, and your spouse is working somewhere else, and insurance is offered, that she could not come over here. Um, can, what, what? All right, when they started this program with what, the insurance, who? the federal government, uh, the federal government does. I mean, this is our union. Our insurance is governed by the. But union. the federal government imposed this insurance mm -hmm. that if your spouse is offered insurance at a, where she works, you can't come over here on his insurance. Yeah, that's not. No. no. Oh yes, that's no. it. I, I'm no. on job. Yeah, that's not. That's April's not. on mine. Yeah, that's not. Huh? That's April's not. is on mine. April is on my insurance plan. Well, I, I, I think I think what happened the feds did is actually made it that you can. I think it is opposite. Before it was too restrictive, and now it's that you can. Because we, we there's a reason why we're doing this. I'm missing what you're saying. If you're missing what we're saying. But if you both have a family plan. But no, but they don't have family. But both of them don't have family plans. So we're trying to get them to get the spouse. We're trying to get them to go with someone else's insurance plan, completely off of ours. It's that we're incentivizing people to take insurance coverage elsewhere. But yes, it would it'd be pointless if you have, if, if you say if I'm married, time. if my wife has a plan and I have a plan, that's pointless. Because we're both, unless we... You can only collect on one. Unless, yeah, well, I'd have to run a claim through mine. I wouldn't run my, you know, other half's claim through mine because she has her own. That, but that's not how this setup is working. Only one person has, and you know, they're just going to that other plan. And yeah, I don't. You're basically saying if it's, you know, to, uh, you know, this person's carrying the family insurance for the whole family, but something changes to where the wife's 
insurance is a better deal. Okay, well, I'm going to scrap the city insurance and get my wife's now. And the whole family's on the wife's insurance. So now the city saves money because I switched over to the better insurance or whatever reason. Sure. Mm hmm So we'd be paying them how much? Um, <clears throat> we're proposing, I, we haven't done the legislation. We're just real just talking to you guys to see if you guys are in, interested in changing or not. I'm still going to draft the legislation. Um, we're looking at probably, uh, it's a quarterly payout, so anywhere from five to six probably. For the quarter? No, for the year. Oh, okay, that divided in. Yes, yes. So if it's $6,000, it would be $2,000 gotcha. a quarter. One time or annually? It's per quarter. So it's every year. Six, first day, six thousand, mm -hmm. or two thousand a quarter every year. Like the one of the city manager contracts I saw says, as long as they take a single family insurance plan, they'll get an additional seven thousand. So when you look at those of us on your single insurance plan, like myself, how much money we save you on a monthly basis by not having a child. Right. So there's, but we don't have any synthesized offers for people who just take single plan. Now, I know some people will yeah. take, will take the savings and they'll say, okay, if you cut it, we'll take X amount of dollars that we're saving from you not being our insurance and put it before the kid. Also. Yeah, we can't do that with with PERS. Right, right, right. But yeah, that is another way to do it as well. So that cash payout. Yeah. Okay. So we'll we draft the legislation for you on that. It'd just be amending it, but seriously consider it because, like I said, if, if you're not going to synthesize people to get off our insurance, they're going to keep it because it's such good and, you know, the city pays a lot of that premium and all that other stuff. So um, we'll go ahead and draft the legislation on that, but I did want you guys to see that numbers, see the numbers to kind of put in perspective exactly what we do put out on a year uh, cost for the different health plans that we have. All right, welcome everyone. Hello. All right, just upcoming legislation is the last. We have the uh, codification numbering updates, employee generally code section update, CIP amend, 2022 appropriations, and then the health insurance pay, pay or wave out um, that we just talked about. So any other questions, I'd be happy to entertain. Council. I had a handful of things actually, Mr. Bridge, um, mostly budget related. You want me to do them now or I'm sure. business? No, let's do it. Okay, so uh, a couple of things. Um, let's see, we did that one. I can't, and some of these we may have discussed, and I'm, I missed it, I don't know. Um, I know we get a lot of people asking about the, the entryways to go out with signs and whatnot, mm -hmm. the cloud would sign. Is there going to be any money in the budget to, to maybe do some work on that or replace it? Uh, we didn't put any in there, so now's the time to do it before we submit it to council. Because yeah, the, the sign is getting pretty, you know, it's down by you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. We had looked at that before I did at least, and the complete replacement's going to cost you around probably ten to $15,000 a sign. So you got four of them. And I didn't know if maybe, I mean, you might know better than, than. Yeah, you should have four. You have Honey Creek, you have 235. And there's also one up north over the V-Split is. It says, welcome to the city. Yeah, it's a real, it's a smaller one. It's a smaller one. It's not like the other two. Okay. I just didn't know if maybe we could, if we decide on putting some money in something that maybe would would hold up a little longer and sure. like a yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know what about signs, but mm -hmm. metal or something that, that won't that rot. Like yeah. Do you want me to go ahead and fast track a, a quote and then whatever that quote is, go ahead and throw it into the budget? Would that be undoable? I mean, is that realistically for you to do oh, yeah, time-wise? Mm -hmm. Not a problem. I would, I would love to, yes. Okay. Thank so you. what we'll do is I'll just get a quote and then based off what those quotes are, we'll just put a, a number into the budget. Um, so we do the appropriations that draft I gave you. It'll be a little different. We'll pull that probably more likely out of the general fund, so that balance will go down a little bit. But I'll email you guys, let you know what number we're putting in there, so you know. Awesome. But yeah, that's a great, great addition. I just, you know, I know with, with some of the things that you know maybe coming to the city down the road, it, you know, some of those things could definitely use some tender love and care. You know what I mean? Yep. Also on the budget. Um, I know in the budget meeting I brought up, you know, the possibility if you were to ever do a, uh, a, a, a new hire, whether it was a float or whatever that mm -hmm. comes of that yeah. conversation with you and Howie, I would still love to see a little bit more money put. I, I think you mentioned maybe $14,000. Um, if, if, if you were to have meetings down the road and, and you guys agreed that, okay, we could use a full-time floater, 
would it be hard for you to go back and say, okay, instead of the 14, you actually need you know, a conversation to take, you need 37. You guys can put a bigger number in there, absolutely. I mean, sure. If you want just to pad it, but as far as like saying, like we need this position or that position, we'll make that determination. Um, but if you want to put some more money in there to cover it, great. If not, then we'll just probably have to do a supplemental if it comes down to it. Um, but yeah, all you guys need to do is put the money in and what happens after that would be up to us. Well, okay. With that being said, mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you came to that conclusion, you did want to hire a full-timer, would it be, I mean, you'd have to go through some, some legislation. I'm not, I, we're not, I don't think it's very beneficial to hire a full-time person for that. I would, I would hire two part-times. Okay. But as far as the money goes, would mm -hmm. you, would you rather have it in there now or do it later? Um, I think we're good with what we have now, to be honest with you, because Howie and Kat, uh, Kat Collie went through there. But like I said, if you guys want to throw some more money in there just to pat it, we can we can definitely do that. No, I mean, if you guys have talked about it, then that'll work for me. Okay. And then one other thing related to money. <laughs> Actually, no, two more. <laughs> that time um, of year. Is for, for um, wages. Mm -hmm. Did we account it when you guys did the budget? Did you count it for union negotiation? Oh, yeah. So, if you. And I, I didn't, if you mentioned that, I didn't hear it. So uh, they're looking at a dollar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Total. For, for, for the first year. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. It's a, usually a four-year contract? It's a three-year contract, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then one more. Curbs on Main Street. Mm -hmm. Anything in there? Um, I, well, I, I know you guys just said we're working some things. I just didn't know. There is no money in for curbs on Main Street, no, because that's a million dollars. That's a, that's a very big project you have to budget for. Okay. Right, isn't that the responsibility of the property owner? It is, but what we have to do is if they don't do it, we have to do the work for them and assess it. So we'd still have to come up with the money. Right. Well, Main Street's going to get repaved. I think Mr. Kripko said. Oh, I know. Yeah, There's fine. ways you can do that. Like when I did the sidewalk repair program when I was still the planning director, um, I went out and did all of Northwoods and tagged them myself and just sent out a courtesy letter saying, hey, you know, if you can fix this on your own, great. I didn't mention anything about assessing it. We had such a good turnaround on that. You know, so we'll have to look at the way we want to do it downtown because you know, if it's bad, we'll have to go talk to the business owner. They may do it on their own, but something like that, we're going to have to fund to back it up if they're not going to do it. We have to do it and assess their property. I would say, I would think that you could get a better deal for having the whole thing. It would. Of mm -hmm. Pieces. Individuals. Yep, absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll, I'll just say this with, with your, you know, with you dealing with this stuff a lot with Howie, you know, since he said that Main Street is going to be getting repaid. <laughs> Um, in 2023 by the state, the majority of them. Yeah, maybe that's the time we that, focus that on the project. Maybe at least, maybe not this year, but in 2022, start thinking about how to prepare for the curbs if need be in 2023. Yeah, that's a good, that's a, might as well, because here's the deal, if we do them before then, they're going to get ripped up. Yeah, chewed up or whatever yeah, well, it may be. So, so earmark that. Um, he'll be here ne next meeting. We'll talk to him about that so okay. we can start placing it, but I think it's a fantastic, if we just have an end goal, 2023, we need to have it done. Okay. Yep. Awesome. And then he'll have a better understanding too of like the money dollar amount we we'll have to put in there, even if we put a little bit back um, and look at other ways to, to fund the project. But we need to get that in line um, because we're, we want to beef up our downtown. We got some money in the planning department budget for some upcoming potential things that are going to be coming, which we'll share with you guys in due time. Right. So it is a vested interest of us to look into that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is all I have, sir. Thank you so very much. Fantastic. Good. It's my turn then. Yes, it's your turn. Cool. On a related topic to signs, how much of Addison New Fall Out Road is in the city? I don't know that off the top of my head. It goes out past, just past the curb. And then it's only the one side. Where the sign begin county maintenance. Right. right, because only one side of the street, though. Like, if you're, right. even if you're going out to, I think Jessica Putterball's off house, and then the other side's not. It's confusing. So that's one of those split. One side is hard, one side is Yeah, I'm almost positive. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because they, uh, I guess it was either the county or five county or probably the county mm -hmm. that repaved it. But it just stops. A, it's still a mess. Oh, gotcha. I mean, it's rough as can be. Uh, so that would not be our who's responsible. Oh, if the county that. did it, then yeah, that would be their repaving. Mm -hmm. I don't recall us being up there. I could be wrong, but why don't we have a sign that says New Carolina Corporation? I don't know. Mm, probably one of those things you don't think about. Like, <laughs> who thinks about well, that? I mean, so. For all, all five people. All five people? Well, <laughs> six. I go up there about once a month. So Every other road that comes into the city, 
accept that. As it, it probably, you know what, talk to the people who annexed it in Lake? because it probably should have been done back then when they yeah. annexed it in. Is there one yeah. on Westlake? Yeah. the county line? Yeah, county line. Okay. At Scarf Road? Yeah, on Scarf, yeah. <coughs> you would know. I would, yeah. Well, let me put a bug in somebody's ear to think about it. I'm, I'm right <laughs> down, right here. Okay. You hear that little bug? Zit. Okay, got it. Do we know how much that accident cost us? Which accident? That main and general. The Not accident. Yet, no. the, the accident. Ac the accident. <laughs> I no. Cost of the two poles it took out, which is their probably, I don't know, it's like five, six thousand. Two poles, a bunch of trees. It's a man mm -hmm. And a very devastated uh, resident. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is worse than anything. We, we need to replace the labor. Huh? Mayor was yeah. speaking up. It was, yeah, it was, it was good at labor. But no, I, but all jokes aside, Sally is very upset. Oh, yeah. she's, Supposedly she found someone to fix the line. I hope she does, because yeah. those, she was more concerned. I was going to uh, Friday to get candy for the deputies to hand out. She was outside, and she immediately started crying, hugged her. And she was more concerned about the lines than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. So. She posted something that she found somebody that can repair them. Oh, it's bad. It's like a war zone. That was horrible. Horrible. And another question. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking about it all day. That's usually how it goes. Yes. Yes. Um, I'll let other people. It'll come to you. It'll come to you. You still have other business. I'll call you at 3 in the morning. <laughs> I'll probably be up. So fire away. All right. Anyone else for the city manager? Okay. I've got it. i got it. There it is. A lady approached me today, a bit perturbed that no, 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 no bashing to you, Mr. Mayor, but uh, they were uh, promoting the uh, outdoor store that's about to open. And she said... Oh, who's promoting? Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And she said, well, why don't they do a lot of the other new businesses? And she mentioned the one where Maggie speak, uh, my tenant. Uh, the uh, massage lady and got me thinking why can we not let the city know what we have going on in town small businesses in town when, when a new business comes in we just even maybe something in with the water bills we'll sheet one side each side uh, I'd rather just do it on the Facebook page. Or the local, not everybody. Mm -hmm. So you think just having, hey, Carter's junk door to open is going to be? Well, a little bit about it. A little bit about it. Who they are, what they have. Okay, sure. We'll look into a way to do that, and then we'll have it back. To Does it cost a lot to uh, the? Uh, Newsletter in the water bill? No, it's just so small that there's not a lot on there. It's quarterly, so, you know. Um, a lot of that's going to require those businesses to give us the information they have, if they want it on there or not, or they do. But we'll just have to figure out something. The easiest way to do it is on the Facebook page. Water bill, you only get so many lines out of, you know. Um, but that's our pretty much our means of communication. I mean, a, a separate sheet included with the, the water bill. Well, that's an additional for the posted so. Because it weighs down. And it weighs down, so we have to pay an additional. Anytime we do an additional insert, it costs money. You to do the price of the coffee, then the price of the uh, additional whatever post it to require, if any. But that's not free to add stuff in there, so you got to look at your costs. So if we're going to spend that much money to promote a business, I'm not saying we shouldn't, we just got to look at a feasible way to do it, you know. Maybe, maybe if we started asking council members to promote stuff, on their page, their Facebook pages, to go see something that's on the New Carlisle City web page, or sharing it over to their page. Well, let we me offer another alternative. Mm -hmm. A lot of communities on their official city or village website have a section for businesses. Feature, featuring businesses throughout their jurisdiction. How about if we do that? That would be for council to make a motion for us to do that, but it is a good idea. Could, but I'm almost positive I thought we had something on our planning tab for that. Mm -hmm. 
but I'll look. But there's ways to do that, yes. But the thing with that is, you know, I mean, we'll put it on the website. They go out of business. It's up there. We got to. It's a lot of manpower to do this. So I'll write this thing. Well, you don't have access. I do have some experience with. Oh, you, you do. You do. Yeah. You do. <laughs> but there's easy ways to do that. Whether it be a website thing or a Facebook posting, I'd rather do that. Uh, water bill stuff. People don't read it anyway. You know, we'll put a line on there. Um, but there's ways to do it. That's easy. I'm just more concerned about the manpower, getting the data, getting the business owner. I mean, it's a lot to upkeep. Now, after five years, you got a, you have a massive Excel sheet database you have to manage. So it's not so much the current it's about what it turns into, uh, but that's easy. We can we can handle that. Good. I guess I'm done. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Sir. Yeah. <coughs> Alrighty. Thank you very much, Mr. Bridge. And moving on to comments from members of the public. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, please go to the podium with your name and address. Five minutes. Five minutes. My name is Samantha Grabo. I live at 103 Worth Drive. The last time I was here was October 4th. And I couldn't be here last meeting to address my issues because I was getting over COVID. But Mr. Lowry, your benefit, I looked a couple of words, for your benefit, I looked up a couple of words to define them in freedictionary.com. And professionalism is defined as competence or skill expected of a professional. And non-professional is defined as one, not professional, not pertaining to or characteristic of a professional, and two, at variance with professional standards or ethics, unprofessional conduct. <clears throat> I founded and I'm a president of the High Class Hookers in New Carlisle, and we crochet for the homeless in our community here in Clark County. And this year we are looking to put out 350 hats to the homeless and 12 sleeping mats. Each sleeping mat takes us about 200 hours, okay? Um, but we, um, we also, besides crocheting for the homeless, we also crochet for people in nursing homes and cancer patients. I started this group because I look at my, my calling to do God's work. This year, um, like I said, we are putting out all of those things to help people in our community. If you think there's not homeless here, you're all crazy. I also teach sign language. I do this as a way of teaching children not to discriminate, that everyone is the same. A person is not different because of their race, their ethnic origin, their religion, their disability, or any other reason. I try to spend my life being a type of person God would like me to be. So when I came here last month in good faith to talk about the noise caused by the motorcycles at the Heritage of Flight Festival is sad in me when I started receiving phone calls and text messages from my friends and people I know. We were shocked how you, Mr. Lowry, let others talk poorly of me, and, when, and then you yourself talk poorly of me, and then Peggy Eggleston talked poorly of me. I was accused of having an agenda. I did have an agenda. It is protect the hearing of children and our older residents so they don't end up like me, deaf. But I shouldn't have to, I should not be surprised how you treated me after I left when you openly treated two people that spoke before me badly. Mr. Lowry, you need to realize you are not a god. And you get up every day and you put your pants on the same way everyone else in this town does. That makes you no better than anyone else. When you chose to allow other residents to talk poorly about others in the meeting that you were supposed to be running, and then you partake in that and allow other council persons to also chime in, and your lack of professional shines through. When someone comes before council to speak, they expect to be treated with respect, not belittled or demoralized. 
by you or this council. This council is not a congregation of the cool kids because you, Mr. Lowry, are not a cool kid when you treat people in this fashion. You are nothing more than a bully. You start this meeting with a prayer, and I find that very hypocritical. To try to convince people you're some kind of Christian or moral person, and then you treat people the way you do? My hearing loss or deafness is not something that you have a right to ridicule or make fun of. So just stop. Your condescending words are not professional, but then nothing about you, the way you spoke to anyone at that meeting was professional. My integrity also isn't something you have a right to judge. They say people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Well, you, Mr. Lowry, and you, Peggy Eggleston, should both reflect on this. I know the agenda you thought I had when I came here last month. But I assure you that my Bible and my God teaches me that I should forgive trespassers as God has forgiven me. So you see, Mr. Lowry, you are the one here with an agenda that isn't representing the people that voted for you. Stop assuming you know me or anything about me. Character is defined as a trait, quality, a high moral code by freedictionary.com. <clears throat> and you have a very poor character. I define character as a person you are when no one is looking. I like the person I am when people are and when people aren't looking. While serving in the US Navy, I learned to fight for the ones that can't fight for themselves. So I will always fight for the underdog. Mr. Lowry, I would like a public apology from you and Peggy Eggleston and that person that was on your parks committee or whoever she was that spoke poorly of me. Mr. Lowry, I find your words about me to be discriminating. If you think you can scare me off by talking poorly about me, well, my grandma taught me this. If you're talking about me, you're leaving some other poor innocent soul alone. But it's not going to make me give up my fight to protect others' hearing. I am also going to make sure that this council will uphold the noise ordinance and enforce it. Now, Mr. Lowry, my agenda is laid out for you. I think the last time I was here, I was invited to the Heritage of Flight Festival meeting, committee meeting, to discuss the noise of the motorcycles. <coughs> when is that meeting so I can attend and speak to them about this noise? We haven't said it yet. We usually start our meetings up and I mean, it varies. It's not a set date, January, February, March, sometime that time. We have a wrap up meeting, which is not for anything for the next meeting. It's about our final. So you don't have a scheduled next meeting? No, everybody's taking time off and relaxing. So we haven't said it yet. Mm. So. But you will personally invite me to the next meeting. Oh, I have no problem with letting you know. Okay. Thank just, you. I, Should I stay for the rest of the meeting or are you going to talk smack about me as soon as I leave? You are welcome to stay if you'd like. Oh, okay. That is your, you are very welcome to. All right. Anyone else? All right. Thank you very much. All right. Moving on. Committee. Oh, did you have something? Yes. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't see you. I, I am sorry, sir. Yeah. I'm Don Hall, resident of 609 West Jefferson. Um, I'm also a member of the Charter Review Committee. Uh, we have had two meetings since the last city council meeting. Uh, and we push forward meeting minutes to uh, Mr. Bridge. And I'm just here to field any questions you guys may have. Council. Don, I happen to have read the information that uh, Kathy sent over. I concur with about everything that was in that communique that possibly the charter needs to be revamped so that the average person can read it without a law degree. The other standpoint, the fact of it is, I think you made, or in that communicate, you folks made mention of communication. 
and I will have to agree, I think communication was brought out on several factors that we as the council need to work on communication, not only with our administration, but with our citizens. One of the aspects that I perceive in the meetings with the city manager is the fact that we possibly go out into the community and talk with the business owner. For example, I'm sure we could probably go to Evans Cattle Company, the landscaping company south of town, and see the aspects of what we can do in order to help them. These people bring a lot of employees into the area, and I'm sure some of them reside in the city meaning that we're going to recoup taxes. So I think it's, it's one of those situations that I do wholeheartedly agree with almost everything that you have in that communique that Kathy sent to us. Good. Yes, sir. Mr. Gum. I also read it, and I agree with it. Um, Lawyers are written in legalese because it's lawyers that write the legislation. Our legislation is written by Jake, correct? Written by me. Not close to it. <laughs> <laughs> he approves it, but he it's approved by Jake. It, yes. <laughs> um, I think it's James Madison who said legislation should never, never be so voluminous or complexly written that the average man can't read it. Um, but I'm at a loss as to how to fix it other than rewriting everything. If I could respond to that. Um, I don't know necessarily. So I'm, I'm trained as a paralegal, um, so I'm no lawyer, uh, but I definitely write for lawyers. Um, but I think what would probably help is just, you know, some of it is just, is just plain English. You know, the, the sentences are way too compounded mm -hmm. and you've broken apart a little bit using, you know, Latin words and legal words like hereby and therefore, you know, replacing that with, you know, as a result of, you know, this isn't like a systematic change of, you know, the charter. It's just if anyone in this city, everyone in this city, and if you're going to quote, you know, the Federalist Papers and James Madison, um, you, that's essentially the essence of what we're trying to accomplish is, you know, we feel like we have a pretty intelligent group of people and you know we're struggling you know this this is what i perceive this to mean this is what they perceive this to mean so it would just you know for us and also i think it'd be a sell knowing that this ultimately has to get onto the ballot to say you know to our constituents that we're trying to construct a charter that works for you that can be read by you and maybe that will get the attention of the public to want to be more involved in this very important document for our city so I don't want to get into a bunch of lawyer costs and things like that um, with, you know, having them just completely rewrite this in more of a, you know, sixth grade reading level or something. But just as we see things, you know, chapter and verse, like, hey, what do you guys think about restructuring this sentence to this? Uh, we just didn't want to get too deep into the charter without actually talking to you guys about mm -hmm. that. I think it's laudable. Did you? Just a minute, would you finish, Mr. Jim? Well, to entirely rewrite it, as you say here, at a sixth grade reading level, uh, that would be a dog to the past. Yes, sir. And, and we understand. And obviously, we're uh, energized and naive enough right now to, to uh, say no, a lot of these things. You I'm guys not, have. I'm not trying to discourage you. you know, yes, sir. You guys think you can do it. Yeah. We have a very motivated group of individuals right now that care deeply about our city and care about this charter. So as long as we can maintain that motivation, I feel very confident that we can accomplish that. Anything else, Mr. Green? I'm fine. Did you have anything else? Nah, go for it. <laughs> I haven't read your uh, report because uh, when Mr. Bridges sent it out today, I was still at work and I just I haven't really busy afternoon, so I'll read it tonight. But I just I did have just one question: is I mean, I mean, you just spoke on, on a little bit of the group itself. I mean, how do you feel about the group you have? I mean, you guys think that you'll push through? I, and yeah, I think it was John Maxwell that once said, uh, "You just need a fistful of friends, and all your friends should complement one of your weaknesses." 
and I think this group, we complement all of each other's weaknesses. We have a really nice gauge of individuals. Uh, one thing that continuously keeps coming up is uh, maybe having some sort of representation from the Hispanic community. Um, I don't know what the current demographics are, but Wikipedia, I think, said 12%. Uh, pretty significant amount. Of our 25%. Um, understand, uh, Mr. Bridge did address this and, and talked about potential, you know, ethical issues or, and concerns that way. But I do think potentially holding a town hall, this would also check that communication box and having an interpreter present um, where we can get some more, you know, feedback, you know, from constituents. Because that is also a reoccurring thing from every meeting is we really want to hear the public's voice on this. Mm -hmm. And, and just knowing that that is, you know, a demographic within our city, you know, what kind of, you know, opportunities, you know, do you guys see in which we can reach these people? If I may add something else, communication is great, but we've tried. Uh, food. See how many people come to council meetings. Yes. Dean comes all the time. Terry comes quite often. Dewey Pass, that was one of our regular mm -hmm. attendees. Um, it's hard getting people involved. Well, when we get the, uh, and Casey, please correct me if I'm wrong, when we get the Wi Fi, could we live stream the meetings? Uh, well, once, but once we get the live, the, wi the Wi Fi, could we live stream the meetings? Uh, capability will be there. Yeah. Uh, so sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. So it's something to think about, guys. We're We could have a like that where we can do like a council where you guys are present and get a babysitter. Living rooms without them happening. Sorry to interject, I just thought it would be a perfect time to say that. I hope I'll think of something else. Okay. I'll keep you on, on okay. feedback. Did we have a line item in there as far as uh, cost incurred for any type of printing, uh, mail outs, or any type of thing for the charges of your committee? No, we, we beefed up some line items for legal advertising and stuff, yeah, okay. across the board. All right. And the reason I said that. Oh, you're running this, a lot. If we even look at a possible computer complete rewrite, I, I think we're going to be snowing the public on too much information. And in order to get an affirmative vote on what we're doing, could be pretty to mount this job. Yes, sir. That, that is definitely, that was something that was discussed at the last meeting. Um, and, and that's, I guess we have to be careful with our words. We're not looking to completely rewrite the charter, but you know, at least from you know our committee's level, when we read this, if we feel that sentences should be restructured and words should be replaced, um, that's what our focus is. Um, you know, blowing this thing up and rebuilding it—that's how I would classify a rewrite. And I'm not sure, from our review level at this point, that that is plausible. Um, but I do think I'm sorry, Mr. Bridge. Oh no, I'm just I'm just getting on the end. when you're done. Go yes, so it, it, it's it's essentially just trying to you know just going over you know some of the sections like section 1.02 where we talk about boundaries and annexation. Um, that was very confusing to me. Um, so that was that it's a section right there where I'm like let's just table that. I'm not totally clear. Um, and if I could take a step back, we're, it, I put it in the report, but we're addressing every line in every section with three questions. What is this? Why does it exist? And what are the consequences? What are the results? Um, so if we can't get past what is this, it makes it very difficult to do the, the rest of the analysis that we feel you know, is required for this charter. So you know, it, it, that's just an example. Does that address an answer? In here it says, in that same section, 1.02, no territory shall be detached from the city of New Carlisle. Does that mean 
removed from the city or <coughs> not contiguous with the city. What does it say again? No territory shall be detached. Detached. What that means is, let's say that you have Riverside, Ohio is a perfect example of this, by the way. Not contiguous. Yeah, so basically you have our little town here. This is current New Carlisle. You have township out here. What they're saying is that you have your city limits, but you won't be able to leave the city limits to get to a detached territory. So the city of Riverside is a bunch of collection of places that Dayton and township didn't want. So if you look at city, you pull up city of Riverside, Ohio on Google map, you'll see it's one big section, one other section across from the base, and they have these three little islands up north. Mm -hmm. Clayton the same way. Yeah, we something like that. We can't annex Park Lane. Mm -hmm. No one said anything about that. We're not no, doing no, that no. Park Lane. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot do that. I'm just saying, we, <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, it's, but it says no territory shall be taxed in the city of New Carlisle, nor shall the corporate existence of the municipality be terminated without the consent of the electors. That should be two separate sentences. That's yes, sir. two separate, or two separate paragraphs, two separate ideas. And the charter and our uh, ordinances are all like that. The ordinance is a legally binding situation, so that's why the ordinances are written like that, because it's a legal, it's a legal contract, essentially. So that is. So would the charter be? Hmm? The charter would be. Charter would be two, yeah. It is. It's very hard on the eyes and mind, but I don't know. Um, what I was going to suggest, and I'm just my opinion, just hear me out on this. Like, I remember like when we were doing our thesis and stuff like that, when I was doing my thesis, like you'd read these research articles and you had to read it four different times and you're like, what does that mean? Because it's so well written. And what I did, especially in paragra certain paragraphs, I did the same, asked myself three questions. Like, what is it? What does it mean? How do, how, do, how do I make it easier on myself? So instead of rewriting the whole charter, have you ever thought about under a section, instead of rewriting it, just add a layman's term, like it'd be two point one territory and boundaries and then like 2.1a layman terms this means that blah 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 so instead of just rewriting it all what you're doing is adding a section to it that just explains what it is in layman's terms just an idea just keep that in mind i'll definitely bring that back to the committee yeah um but i think that that, that kind of is is the direction that we're trying to accomplish yes just make so it instead easier of rewriting it, just put it on the layman to be able to pick it up and read it yep awesome well, again, Mr. Hall, thank you for um, thank you to all of you for doing that. And uh, like I said before the meeting started, you can continue to send them to Mr. Bridge because I think he likes to have them as well. But you can send you can tag us all in as well and just save you a couple clicks. Mm -hmm. so, uh, thank you very much. For the I just have one more thing. Yeah. Just just so you guys said you were all good with it. The the one thing section two point zero one was form of government. Um, it was our unanimous consensus that we do not want to touch that, uh, but just going back to you, because that would be a major overhaul change yeah. if we had a strong mayor form of government rather than a strong city manager, but yeah. just wanted to make it unanimous across the council that they have no wish for that. Well, thank you, council. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. The other last two have anything? So we got 30. I just want to say thank you for the mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Committee reports done tonight. Resolutions done. Drop down the ordinances. Two for, or I'm sorry, uh, two for, let's see, one, two, yeah. Yeah, fourth action, two for introduction tonight. Ms. Carter, if you would, please. Yeah, give me just a second. All right. So we have ordinance 2021-38. This was introduced on October 18th. Public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for liability insurance with USI Insurance Services, LLC, representing the public entities pool of Ohio for the administration of said policy. Okay. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Green. Okay. And an explanation of this ordinance. This is a yearly ordinance that we do, um, and it is for our uh, liability insurance. Uh, we have been with USI for quite some time. I love doing business with them. Um, great relationship between the two entities. Uh, this is the one, two, three, four, fifth year in a row of decline, so we like that. 
So for this year, our expiring contribution will be $56,321. Council, any discussion? Right, when you're ready, please. Okay. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. The motion's passed 6 0. Moving on to Ordinance 2021-39. This was introduced on October 18th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance approving the editing and inclusion of certain ordin ordinances as parts of the various component codes of the codified ordinances, providing for the adoption and publication of new matter in the updated and revised codified ordinances, and repealing ordinances in conflict therewith. Thank you. Council. So moved. <coughs> Mr. Vice Mayor and Ms. Eggleston with a second. And an explanation of this ordinance. This uh, details the changes that we submitted to the online code. This could be changes to the code that council had voted on. Um, a lot of this is just changes to the state code that the state had voted on. So we do this every five years per our, our, our codes. I'm actually going to start doing it yearly because we do a lot of stuff online, more so than what we did five years ago. Uh, but the reason why it is, uh, well, the price is not on here. But the reason why it was kind of expensive this year is because it's the first time we've done it in a couple of years. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Council, any questions, comments from Mr. Bridge on this one? When you're ready, please. Okay. Councilman Nokowski? Yeah. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Yeah. Councilman Eggleston? And that motion passes 6 to 0. We have Ordinance 2021 40. This was introduced on October 18th. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending Chapter 1246 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding city policy. And an explanation of this ordinance. Um, since we are having a hard time having citizens build some boards, um, we would like to look at, if council should approve this tonight, having council act as board of zoning appeals when there is not enough members to have that hearing. Right now we're down to one member. Uh, so we have two boards that do a lot of work, planning board and we have the board of zoning appeals. Planning board has enough quorum right now, BZA does not, um, but it will hold up business for our, uh, our new business coming in town, but also for our citizens. So if someone on, you know, in, in town wanted to put a shed in their backyard and they needed a variance of two feet, they're holding off until we get a quorum on the board. What this will allow us to do is put them into you guys and council can go ahead and vote on that variance. Uh, there is a section of the BZA code that you should probably look at prior to your first meeting. There's a series of guidelines that tell you how to vote uh, with different, different scenarios, but we can walk you through that. But it's basically it's just a catch-all so our, so our citizens and business owners can continue on doing business. Any discussion? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, would this be automatic or would the uh, petitioner need to request? It would be automatic, so we have no, no, no impact to the <coughs> applicant at all. Cool. So we'll just freeze right through. Move smooth through cool. that. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. That motion passes 6 to 0. Thank you. Okay, we have Ordinance 2021-41, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on November 15th. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 for the purpose of upgrading the City of New Carlisle's utility billing software program. We have Ordinance 2021-42E, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action Tonight. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 and authorizing the city manager to purchase a secondary clarifier for the wastewater treatment plant and declaring an emergency. Do we need a motion for suspension? No, this is an emergency ordinance. We're going to vote on it tonight.
So you don't need an emergency. You don't need to suspend the rules. Why would I need to suspend the rules? For the emergency. No, it's just an emergency. It's just an emergency ordinance. Okay. Okay. All right. So move. Oh, thank you. One of the six you need. Miss Eggleston was your second. Eggleston was the second. We've been whisked away to Hawaii. <laughs> okay, so an explanation of this ordinance. This is an emergency, so we will need six council members. Uh, but we have some clarifier issues we have going on, which we told council about. We have three we're going to replace. This is uh, the first zip of money that we're going to use some American Rescue Plan funds for. Uh, but we do need to get it going so we can secure this price and get the project done. So that's why it's an emergency for you guys tonight. So we, need, we will need six votes to move forward. Any discussion, council? Mr. Cutler. Didn't we already authorize a second one over there? Yeah, but Not this too long ago. Yeah, probably. But this, I have to have this to expend the money of twenty thousand or more. So we didn't do that yet. So I can't spend over twenty thousand without your guys' authority. <clears throat> now I'm thinking we already done that. I still need you to vote yes. And no, no, we haven't done it. We have, we, we, we have, we fixed the clarifier last year. Right. Then we have Kicker would come back and said they was go, they was going to need another one. Yeah, there's four total we need to get fixed. Right, but we was only working on two of them right now. Mm -hmm. no, no, we, we didn't. We fixed one. We have three other ones we have to do. We're doing one and then two. So that's not the way Mr. Kicker explained it. It doesn't matter how he explained it. He explained it correctly. We already fixed one. Yeah. We fixed one last year, the year before. And then he brought up then the we, next then one. Then we have to brought up the next one. And then we fixed one last year. Yeah, yeah. Because we had to borrow off money to fix it. Yeah, this is a completely different one. We have four total we need to fix. This is number two out of four. And the reason we're moving it up is because we got the American Rescue Plan. It's fun to do it. So we're not financing anything. It's coming out of the rescue plan funds. Yeah, so this will still be the second one. He brought up the second one earlier in the year with the funds and the grant and, and how it was all going to work and the layout of the whole project, but we didn't actually push the button to 100% get it done. This is just another step in the process, if you will. Anything else, Mr. Cobb? No. Okay, just want to make sure. Anyone else? Yeah. When you're ready, please. Okay. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? No. We'll record his vote. I don't, we just ruined this project. We just. Uh, can I get you to change your vote to a yes? Is that even allowed? Or once he says no, it's. Because if, we, if it. this doesn't fail, we lose grant funding we, for this project. Well, we don't. I'm confused as to why you're, why you're, why, what's going on. This is free money we're getting from the federal government to do the project. So I'm, I'm, okay, we go on. We already replaced one. They're going to replace it. You can't just do it. Just go with it. I'm just going to keep going. Go with it. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. The motion does fail five to one. So we have to wait 45 days to bring that back. Mm -hmm. All right. Would you like me to read other business? Oh, uh, yes, please. Additional city business, city offices are closed Thursday, November 11th to observe Veterans Day. And we have open discussion for other city related matters. All right. Anything else? Motion to excuse Mr. Rogal. Second. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilwoman Okowski? Councilman Cobb? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Motion to excuse Mr. Rogal. 
passes 6 0. Not anything else? I have a question. Please. Can we reopen the discussion on something that. Emergency ordinance? Right. But it's already been piloted, you gotta wait 45 days. Yeah. So I gotta figure out what we're gonna do with this, these funds, but I gotta step out for a minute. All right. Any other discussion? We need a motion for adjournment. Move to adjourn. Second. Adjourn. Graham Eggleston. Okay. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Motion to adjourn accepted 16. Thank you. We're adjourned. Have a good evening, everyone.